Hi everybody and welcome back to Jewel Family Farm. If you're a, a subscriber, welcome back. And if you're a new subscriber, welcome. We're glad to have you. Um, so I'm a little bit late on getting my videos up this week. Uh, we had a lot of things going on at, at church and uh, just with the 4th of July and you know, I just kind of got behind. But anyway, uh, I don't know about all of you, but we finally got some rain yesterday. Um, much needed, much needed rain, and uh, but the heat's been terrible here in Virginia, and with the heat index, it was up to 109, and one day I think it hit 110. So, with that being said, let's jump right into what we're going to do today. Um, so, uh, this is the second meal that I'm going to make for cold plates. Uh, this is for these hot summer days that we've been having you just don't feel like you just don't feel like having hot stuff to eat and you don't feel like starting the oven although today i am starting the oven because i want to try something different to go with this dish but um this this dish that i'm going to make is going to be stuffed um, tomatoes and i'm going to stuff it with chicken salad and uh but the other thing that i wanted to make to go with it was something i've never had before and i thought we would try it with this and it's roasted radishes um so that's something you know that i wanted to try but you don't have to have that if you know if you don't feel like cooking you could just have some uh, crackers with it or maybe slice you up some watermelon or something cool some cucumbers whatever you know that you would like to have it but the main part of the meal will be already made in the refrigerator for you when you come in from the heat or from work that day or, or whatever that you may be doing going to town so these are nice cold plate meals that are, are refreshing and cold and easy thing to make and have prepared ready to go all right so let's get started all right so yesterday i cooked up some chicken in the crock pot and um, you can use canned chicken um, i just use thighs and, and legs you can use breast you can use whatever part of the chicken you like and so what i'm going to do is i like to i like to put mine in food processor that's just the way that i like to do it so like i said you can use all white meat or whatever you want i just use whatever i have on hand because we like the, all the chicken, so it doesn't matter to to us what part of the chicken it is as far as the white meat or dark meat. So I just want to make sure that there isn't any bones in it when I put it in here. And I don't want to put any of the skin in there because I don't like the skin. So I'm just going to pick through this and pick out all the meat. You can also use um, a chicken from that's been... Uh, cooked at you know the store uh, roasted chicken um, that works really good I have a video on using leftover roasted chicken from that you buy at the grocery store and it's it's the chicken salad parts about the same really um, it's it's you know a whole chicken also but the good thing about this is you can stick it in the crock pot the day before um, and cook it and then just stick it in the refrigerator overnight so when you get ready to make your chicken salad the next day it's nice and cold so i'm just going to pick through this until i get all the chicken that i want out of here um, to go in the food processor and then i'll be right back okay so i got all the chicken in here i've already ground out ground up some of it so i'm going to Find up the rest that I want to use now. We, we're going to make one meal out of this for tonight, but this will be leftovers for um, lunches or another dinner because it's going to make quite a bit. So I'm going to uh, mix all this up and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've used the food processor to mix all this up. Now, if you don't want yours up like this, you can just shred it. Um, we just like it ground up like this. This is how we like it. move this out of the way all right so I'm going to set this to the side for just a minute 
because I want to work on um, the radishes. Okay, so I've already washed these radishes. I'm just going to cut the ends off of them. I think I'm going to cut them in half. I think I'm going to cut them lengthwise so that they'll lay in the, the pans like that. I've never had roasted radishes before. I'm not a real big fan of radishes anyway, but um, I was watching um, Celebrating Appalachia, and she was talking about um, roasting radishes because her husband doesn't care for radishes a whole lot. But he liked, he liked these, so I thought, well, I'll try them. Be something different. So I'm just going to cut them. Cut them lengthwise. Now, I don't really remember how she made hers. If you want to see how she makes hers, you can go over there to her um, to her um, YouTube page. I mean, YouTube, uh, yeah, page. And uh, see how she makes hers. But um, I'll try to put a link, a link below that will um, take you to that video. I'm just going to cut them like that. And then I have the oven set on 400. And I've got a little bit of oil in the pan. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I think what I'm, I think, let's see. Yeah, maybe I'll just lay them down in like that. Well, I wanted to salt and pepper. Well, I'll just lay them like that, and then I'll salt and pepper them. Get a little bit of oil on them, maybe, and then salt and pepper them. Turn them over. Yeah, that might work better. You can use olive oil. I just didn't have any. I would rather have used olive oil for this, um, but I didn't have anything but vegetable oil. So I've just got enough oil in here to kind of coat them you know, so the salt and pepper will stick to them. All right, let me get the salt and pepper. You might could put some garlic powder, some onion powder on them. I bet that would be really, really good too. Okay, I'm going to turn them back over in the pan and let them brown on this side. Okay. That looks pretty. I'm not sure how long it takes them to roast, but uh, I'll let you know when they're done. Okay, so let's get started with this. All right. So here's what I'm putting in my egg salad. I'm going to put in, I mean, my, <laughs> my, egg salad, my chicken salad. So I'm going to put in some celery, I'm going to put in some carrot, I'm going to put in some onion and some egg and some dill and some mayonnaise. And that's what I put in mine. Let me get my grater because I like my carrot shredded. Let's see which one. I think I'll do the. Let me see what size that makes. Yeah, I don't like real big pieces of carrot in my chicken salad. But this looks pretty good.
I'm going to put it in my food processor. And that's what I usually do. But I got distracted with the radishes, so this works just as well. Okay. All right, let's cut up the eggs. You don't have to put eggs in yours if you don't like it, if you don't like eggs or if you're, you're allergic to eggs. But we like eggs in ours. I'm just going to just well, cut these, chop them up any way I can. It doesn't matter how you do it. There's no perfect way to cut up eggs for chicken salad. Especially if you're just cooking for, you, for at home. A lot of people comment, you know, that I may not be doing something exactly right <clears throat> as far as cutting or whatever I'm doing, but I'm just a home cook. I'm not a chef. I've never went to school for cooking or anything like that. I just cook the way my mom cooked, my grandma cooked, all my people cook. We just, I just cook that way. That's the only way I know. I'm going to use this purple onion. I got so I like these purple onions. They're pretty good. I never really used purple onions uh, a whole lot, but um, I kind of kind of got where I like to use them. And I think it makes the salads look prettier too with that purple in there. I like the color purple, and uh, I just think it makes it looks nicer. And you can put as much onion or as little onion as you want. I like to cut it kindly thin because I don't really care to bite into a big chunk of onion. Unless it's something, you know, like roasted vegetables or something. I like to have a big chunk of onion with that sometimes. Alright, so I think I'm going to go ahead and try to use up the rest of this little piece of onion here. Uh, just so I don't I'm going to save the other half and might as well go ahead and use this one up. I would say that's probably about a quarter of a cup of onion. All right, now I'm gonna, I've already washed my celery, but I like to take the strings off the celery. I don't like that stringy, stringiness. I think I got most of it off. All right. I'm not sure I'm going to use this whole stalk of celery. I like celery in my chicken salad dough because I like that little crunch. Well, I like the taste of celery too. I mean, it's to me, I, I just I can just eat it with salt on it. it. Makes a pretty good snack. I like it with peanut butter on it, and I also like it with cream cheese on it. It's really good, and it's really good for lunch. You know, when you're trying to eat a little bit lighter sometimes, when you're kind of watching what you're eating. Um, you can also buy that peanut butter, that powdered peanut butter, and it's got even less calories in it than regular peanut butter does, and mix you up some of that and put it on your celery. And it's really good. I like it. Uh, I like it just as much as I do regular peanut butter. 
but it's got a whole lot less calories than um, regular peanut butter does. And it's got just as much protein in it, so. I think I'm going to use a little bit more of this celery, because like I said, I really like celery. And when you're diabetic, it's got a lot of um, fiber in it, so um, diabetics need, you know, quite a bit of fiber in their diet, so it works out nice. Plus, it makes your meal stretch even longer. Uh, so that's another plus to it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stick that in. That's quite a bit of celery. I'm going to put some dill in there. And I love dill. So let me see. Let me get a measuring Okay, let's see. This is a half of a teaspoon, so let me see how much, let me see what that looks like. Mm, I think I want a little bit more, so I'm going to go with a whole teaspoon of, a whole teaspoon of dill. All righty. Okay, so the other thing that I forgot to tell you that I put in there and I put in, uh, you could put in uh, relish. I like to cut up the little pickles. I use the sweet gherkins, no sugar added. Um, and they're really good because uh, if you're not wanting to eat sugar, these, you can just, you know, eat them anytime. Just pick them out of the jar and eat them because they don't hardly have any calories without the sugar. As a matter of fact, they've got zero calories. So you can just eat those for a snack too, you know. That's a good thing to have for lunch with your sandwich or whatever you're eating. So I'm just going to cut these cut these in fourths and just cut them up. Now, like I said, you can use pickle relish and uh, you can get the sugar-free pickle relish also or just regular relish, whatever you like. I'm just trying to give you alternatives um, for different uh, diets and also uh, recipes that are frugal that stretch a long way for a family because I remember those days when all my kids were home and I was trying to feed feed my kids, <laughs> feed the kids and, and us and and especially when you're first starting out in life, newly married with new, you know, and starting to have your family and, and you, uh, you know, most, most people, I'm not saying all, but a lot of people, I should say, not most, but don't have a whole lot of money. And boy, I tell you, it's hard when you're first starting out with, with a young family and trying to put food on the table and get the groceries, especially nowadays. I know that a lot of people are having a hard time right now and uh, I feel for them. I really do. And I uh, I remember what those days were like. And it, it's it's a struggle. You have to do without stuff that you need to put food on the table. So I try to show things that's low budget, budget friendly, and family friendly for people that are struggling. And there's a lot of them doing it right now. Okay, so I cut up what I do. Five or six pickles. And put that in there. Okay. I'm going to get the salt and pepper. All right, I'm going to put some salt in there. I don't want too much salt because these pickles got salt in them. So they'll help salt it some. And I already salted the ham... Uh, not the hamburger, the chicken when I cooked it because I cooked it in the crock pot but I also cook it in um, uh, bouillon chicken bouillon and I put a one or two chicken bouillons in there but I like a lot of I like a lot of pepper get a spoon all right so 
the one thing that I do is I pour some of the pickle juice in there. Like I said, it's it's not real sugar, so you get the sweetness, but you don't get the sugar. Mix this up. And if you don't like, you know, sweet chicken salad or a little bit sweeter, you can use dill dill pickles and you also can use a mixture of dill and sweet. Now I've done that and that's really good. I, I really like that. And you can use the dill pickle juice and, or whatever. And you don't have to use any juice. Give me a clean spoon here. I'll say so the next thing I'm going to put in is, is mayonnaise. And this is kind of like you have to, depending on how much chicken you have and how much chicken salad you make, you can't really measure it out. Um, at least I can't. I just kind of guess at it. So I just put some in there and start mixing it up. And then I take a look at it and see if I think I need more. I don't like it with a whole lot of mayonnaise, but I do like it to kind of like stick together. All right, I think I need some more. It does take quite a bit. I'm gonna put a little bit more pickle juice in there just to, to moisten it up and not make it so the chicken won't be so dry. That's another thing. I don't like chicken salad that it's so dry that when you take a bite of your sandwich, you, you get choked kindly or gets hung in your throat or whatever. Yeah, that, that helped a lot. That pickle juice. Now, you can uh, eat this on a sandwich, of course, and you also, another, well, I'm going to stuff tomatoes today, but you can also just have your sandwich with lettuce and tomato and chicken salad on it. And that would be a, a really nice uh, meal. I've done that a lot of times when we're tired or don't want to cook or whatever the case may be. All right, that, that looks pretty good. Nice and moist. Okay, let me clean up my mess and I'll be right back. Okay, so our radishes are done. You can see they are very tender. And I'm just going to lay them out on this paper towel. To let them drain a little bit. Get this extra oil off of them. That didn't take long at all. I think that took 10 minutes. Okay. Whoops. Right, we'll let them sit there and drain for a minute. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to, I'm going to fix this some peaches to go with our meal. I did wash these. The easier way to get the skin off is, uh, I don't know if you all know, boiling water. Dunk them in there for a couple of minutes and then put them over in some ice water and the skins come right off. But I don't feel like doing all that. Cut out the bad spots. My scrap bowl I got here. And it just peels away from the sea. I'm just go in here and pull it out. And then I just slice them up. All right, 
Now, I've already washed my tomatoes. Let me see which one do I want to use here. I think this one. These are nice big tomatoes, and these are garden tomatoes. These are not hothouse tomatoes. I finally got some garden tomatoes. So I'm just going to cut the end of that off. And I'm going to cut a little bit of this off around here. I just don't like this tough skin on the tomatoes. But if you like it, that, that, you don't have to do this. And just cut some of it off. And I'm going to cut this tomato in half. And I'm going to cut this end out of this tomato. The core because it's just too hard. Now you can use a whole tomato. You don't have to cut, but me and my husband, this, this will be a plenty for for us and I just cut it into fours just kind of lay it out like like that and I just lay it out like that and I do have a couple of cucumbers here I want to put on our plate let me go wash these I didn't wash those yet I'm not sure I'm going to use these cucumbers. They feel a little soft. Oh, they look good. They're okay. I'm just going to lay those down there. Oh, yeah. They're good. All right, so then I'm just going to put some chicken salad right on top of this. Okay, then I'm going to pepper it. I'm going to pepper the cucumbers too. I don't want to pepper my peaches though. Okay. Put a little bit of salt on the tomatoes and the cucumbers. All right. And then I'm going to lay the roasted um, radishes on there. I'm going to go ahead and lay them all on there because we wouldn't be able to save these for another meal. So, so there it is. My cold plate number two in the series. And it looks pretty tasty. Oh, I forgot. You can put some crackers on there too if you like. That's a pretty hearty meal right there. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. But the good thing about it is it's pretty low cal, low calorie. Lots of nice vegetables, seasoned vegetables, and seasonal vegetables. So you can just put you a, uh, you know, you could make this early. These you'd have to wait on, though, to make. You could make everything else early and put some saran wrap on it and stick it in the refrigerator. And then when you get ready to eat or get ready to cook or put it together, you can put your your um, radishes in the, in the oven, and it only takes them 10 minutes. So let's take a bite of these radishes. And see what they taste like. 
All right. I'm doing this for my thumbnail. <laughs> All right. So let's see what these taste like. Like I said, I'm not a real big fan of radishes, so. Mm. They're not bad. I think I need more salt. I think putting maybe some onion powder on there, maybe some garlic powder. Yeah, maybe some onion powder. But um, they're not bad. It's not something I would say, oh, let's make some radishes. Let's roast some radishes. But they're pretty good. So anyway, I hope you like this meal. I hope this is something that will, will fit you on these hot summer days. And um, take care. We'll see you on the next video. Please make sure that you watch the video all the way through because it helps me to get higher up in my rank. And also, um, it just... Uh, it just helps all together you know if you watch it through the end but anyway um take care and count your blessings god bless you see you next time bye